It's that time of the year again, where everyone starts to ask one of life's most persistent questions. How do I grow tomatoes? If you're searching the internet or you're consulting an almanac, it's probably because you don't know Margot. Margot White has been a horticulturalist at the Royal Tasmanian Botanical Gardens for over 40 years. She's planted and picked a lot of crops in that time. So trust me when I say, if you've got a tomato question, Margot's the one you want to ask. And luckily, she's a mate of mine. So Margot, I've got to ask you, do you like tomatoes? Yeah, I really like tomatoes. They are summer, aren't they? The thing about them is that they grow so lovingly quickly. You know, like they just take off. If you give them uh, fertiliser and just add water, bit of care, you're off. Yeah. Now, the most asked question is when is the best time to put your tomatoes in the ground? Well, soil temperature is all important and also the lack of frost. You can't do it in a cold, wet area. You need temperatures between um, 16 to 18 to 20. Nothing below that, because otherwise, yeah, it sets the tomatoes back. Now, we've got our temperature right to plant the seedlings. Yep. But one question I get asked a lot is whether to plant determinate or indeterminate tomatoes. So it's up to you, but determinant are the bush tomato, and that's the one that's more compact. Um, indeterminant is staking, and it'll need support. So bush or determinant, as I like to say, remember it as they de you can determine how high they grow, whereas Correct. the indeterminants, no they just idea. keep growing. <laughs> so in regards to the two types, there is a difference in when they yield and how much they yield. Yes. So bush tomatoes or determinants, they come up, they yield really quickly, they don't need any support. Indeterminate ones, they take longer to grow, they can go for longer in the season. So the ground's warm enough, we've got our variety selected, yep. but where's the best spot in the garden to put our tommies? in well-manured, fertilised, friable soil, and it's not wet, it's well-drained and fairly mulch. Open like this, this is a pretty good spot. So a nice open aspect with plenty of sun? Yeah. You've got to be careful, though. You don't want them to be out in the wind too much. Now, tomatoes like it hot, but sometimes it can get too hot. Yeah, so we have hot days in Tasmania, even where uh, the fruit can boil. I imagine that in um, Queensland, there's a need to cover up your tomatoes a lot more. Yeah, they tend to not just protect their plants, but they'll leave more leaves on, whereas we tend to strip ours. Yep. That way they've got leaf coverage of the fruit and that protects it from the sun. And how important is, say, crop rotation in a bed system like this? So important. Solanaceae, which is chilies, eggplants, capsicums, tomatoes, and potatoes shouldn't follow one another. I've got a few old Italian mates that grow the same spot every year, though. So you say. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> So what do you see as correct spacing for tomatoes? Well, they like a little bit of space, so about a metre, metre and a half. People grow them closer, but you need to really prune if you go close. And you're also more susceptible to some kind of viral problem starting in one plant and going through your whole crop. That as well as um, the roots when the two competing plants go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> To stake or not to stake? That is the question. Well, when they're indeterminate, then you actually will stake them. And the, this one here is done with string all the way down with a tent peak in the soil. And as it grows, you stake it and attach it to the string. So, Margot, they like water, but can you overwater them? Yeah. You can overwater them if the soil doesn't drain, and especially when they're young. Once every couple of days, not 
every day necessarily. They prefer to actually be, if for it to be underneath on the soil rather than um, through the foliage because <laughs> you can get fungus <laughs> on, the, on the foliage. And you hate to get powdery mildew or anything like that. Yeah, they really don't like having a shower. No. So we're going to deep stem plant these? Yep, for stability as well as for the rest of the season. Yeah. You can do that in the garden. You uh, sort of dig a deeper hole. And plant them quite deep? Quite deep. Uh, especially a, a more advanced plant like this, but even a seedling, you can go a fair proportion up the stem. And you'll see from that one there that there's uh, bubbles out the sides which are actually silent roots being developed, aren't they? So when they get covered with dirt, they'll shoot out and you'll get a root zone that big. Correct. So I'm going to drop this plant to the bottom of the 35 litre bag. Once we've backfilled, we'll actually be up the stem about 15 centimetres. So that'll give it stability and that'll give it an extra root range. If you've only got limited space, planting in containers or pots can be a great option too. Oh, Margo, tomato pruning. There's a lot of different schools of thought but how do you do yours? Well, I'm thinking that there's too much foliage on the bottom, the, it's going out sideways. These things aren't strapped up. And uh, it just is all round too big and it's flopping in the wind. So let's uh, strap it up. What we're aiming for is to support good, strong leaders and to remove some of the lateral growth anything that's getting in the way, like this one here that's growing back into the plant, or anything that's coming into contact with the ground. Fungus and mildews are the problem, so you want to get the airflow through, get it away from the ground, and I think that this is a lot better than it was, yeah, for sure. Now, you're only going to do this on your vine or your indeterminate varieties, aren't you? That's right, although it, the bush determinant ones. If you've got um, leaves that are looking um, discoloured, you can take them off and also you can pinch to shape. Right. Now we've gone through all the questions to get your tomato plant to the best part of the season, which is harvest. Yes. But what do you do with yours once you've picked them? Well, eat them, but I like to make relish or chutney, yeah. Good answer.